Hey everybody, welcome back. I am traveling through a mangrove swamp right now. As you can hear from the uh, boat engines, we're pretty close to the ocean. Now this is a place I haven't shown you before. And uh, we're gonna talk today about canal crossings and uh, the importance that uh, natural and man-made canals play when it comes to mangrove swamps. So I'm walking in about maybe three or four inches of water through these mangroves. The, uh, the ground is completely waterlogged. We're at high tide right now. And as in all mangrove swamps, the ocean, the tides dictate the pace of life here and just the cycles of the different plants and animals that inhabit this ecosystem. So at low tide, this will be a pretty different environment. The, wa the water will recede and uh, you know, you'll still have soggy ground, but it'll be more or less dry land. Then all the crabs come out and uh, got a whole bunch of different animals that'll make their way around. Um, right now, this environment is dominated by small fishes and uh, crustaceans. favorite animals in the mangroves. It's the uh, mangrove tree crab. We discussed him in an earlier video. And uh, yeah, there he goes. Jumped right off. Let's see if he'll jump down. There he goes. All it's the way incredibly down. important in this environment for you constantly to be hydrating because the humidity and the heat can get astronomical. And there's nobody out here other than you. So if you screw up, you know, no one's gonna help you. Gotta make sure to keep your potassium and sodium levels up too. Otherwise you're gonna get uh, heat cramps and uh, you won't be able to walk anymore. You can see red mangrove flowers that eventually turn into these pods, these seeds that they produce. Uh, when they're ready, they'll actually drop to the water and they float. So they can float along with the tide and the waves for quite a long time actually. And uh, make their way to uh, new shores and there they'll sprout and they'll grow. You can see a lot more pods over here. And that's how mangrove forests spread all over the world. All right, everybody, we have reached our first canal crossing. Canals serve an absolutely vital function in mangrove ecosystems. So they bring um, salt water deep into the interior uh, for the mangroves that live there. Otherwise, mangroves would only be able to survive along the coastline. Also, they act as highways for larger fish and other marine animals that can then enter and exit these ecosystems with the tides. As you can see, the uh, tide is actually moving pretty fast right now. It's coming in and should you find yourself having to cross one of these canals, it's important that you take into account your skill as a swimmer. Um, if the tide is coming out, say out to the ocean, you want to make sure that you can cross the canal before the current actually sweeps you out. So. Uh, you'd actually want to move downstream, uh, excuse me, upstream if the water's coming out. You want to move upstream and uh, give yourself enough cushion to be able to cross it. Um, you can see by the seaweed how fast it's moving, but you know if you didn't have any vegetative matter in the actual current, what you could do is you could just grab a leaf, toss it in, see how fast it's moving, and then just calculate off of that. 
but as soon as all the water's going in and the canal's not too broad, uh, I'll be able to ford it pretty easily. Let's go. Oh man, hope there are no bull sharks. That's all there is to it. Those are actually mollusks that uh, grow on the mangrove roots and uh, they're filter feeders so they'll filter out all sorts of different uh, microorganisms and they also help clarify the water so they, they play a very important role in this ecosystem we've now reached our second canal crossing and some of you might be worried that I'll get attacked by a crocodile or an alligator and now I guess is pretty good time to describe the difference between the two. So we have both native populations of alligators, American alligators, and American crocodiles in Florida. There's a big difference between the two. Uh, alligators are the more aggressive ones and they're, they generally have a more stunted rounded snout and are darker in color and larger. And uh, they only live in fresh water. Actually, give me a second, we got a big fish over here. That's a big mangrove snapper. And also good crocodile food. So, yeah, alligators don't make it out in salt water, which is where we are now. So we're safe from them. Uh, crocodiles are actually able to travel a good ways in brackish and salt water. Uh, however, they're more skittish of the two. There's actually only been one, to my knowledge, one verified report of a crocodile-related death in Florida. That's because some asshole and his friend went out into the Everglades and they shot this poor crocodile. And thinking that it was dead, uh, one of them sat on it um, and for his friend to take a picture and the crocodile wasn't dead, turned around and killed him. So, I'm not going to be doing that today. I'm just going to be crossing this canal. Here we go. And there we are. Good 